Michael Jace may have gotten a late start in his acting career, but his persistence would pay off quite well by him landing numerous roles in various television shows and major motion pictures over a 20-year span. His personal life, which included a wife and children, also seemed to be flourishing. Then it all came crashing down in the most tragic way. Michael Andrew Jays was born July 13, 1962 in Patterson, New Jersey. He didn't begin his professional acting career until the age of 30 when he scored his first role appearing in an episode of Law & Order in 1992. Over the next 10 years, he appeared in over a dozen other TV shows, including Star Trek Deep Space Nine, L.A. Law, Chicago Hope, E.R., and NYPD Blue. He also appeared in the lead role in the 1999 Fox Family Channel TV movie, Michael Jordan, an American Hero. Michael could also be seen on the big screen in projects including Clear and Present Danger, Forrest Gump, The Great White Hype, Boogie Nights, and the 2001 remake of Planet of the Apes. During this time, he'd marry his first wife, Jennifer Bitterman, in 1996. After having a son together, they divorced in 2002, right around the time Michael's career really took off. He'd finally get the role that he would become most known for that same year when he was cast as Officer Julian Lowe on FX's hit show, The Shield. He was part of the main cast through all seven seasons. In 2003, Michael married for the second time to April Lawn. April, 12 years Michael's junior, was an avid runner who ran in sprinting competitions and won numerous awards for her athletic accomplishments. She also worked as a financial aid counselor at Biola University. The couple would go on to have two sons. After his role on The Shield ended, Michael's career slowed down considerably for the next several years. He appeared in only a handful of TV shows as well as a couple of movies. His best showing during this time was a small recurring role on the television series Southland from 2009 to 2013. Little did anyone know, that role would be his last. On Sunday, May 18th, 2014, Savoy, April's adult son from a previous relationship, and her adult nephew, Christopher, came over to Michael and April's house, went out to a movie with April, and then stayed overnight. The next morning, Christopher woke up to hear Michael yelling. You don't have a godly reason for a divorce. The yelling continued for several minutes and Christopher heard two crashes. Savoy grabbed a baseball bat and came out of the bedroom. Christopher followed him and saw a vase smashed on the floor, an ironing board knocked over, and the couple standing by the dining room table. Michael tried to get Savoy to give him the bat, but was unsuccessful. April asked Christopher to get the bat, and he managed to grab it from Savoy. Michael then reassured Savoy, saying, I would never put my hands on your mom. About 15 minutes later, April left the house with Christopher and Savoy to drive her two younger children to school. April texted Michael's friend, Kenneth Brown, who knew Michael through church and worked with him on the shield to check on him. Kenneth texted Michael, when trouble comes, be full of joy. And he answered, maybe too late. April wants out and I'm tired of pleading. She'll accept it or we'll move on. And if she isn't who I thought she was, according to God, a lot of changes, but she'll get what she wants, a way out. Michael and April conversed via text throughout the day as well, from morning until night, resulting in over 160 texts between them. He also informed her that he had been praying and drinking since 10 that morning. She texted him at about 10.45 a.m., I don't want you throwing things and breaking things and screaming lies to the boys. I am afraid to come home. I am glad you are praying. While claiming he would vacate the premises for the night, he also added that his biggest mistake was being involved with a woman who isn't submitted to God. That afternoon, Michael texted April accusing her of being involved with another man, which she denied. I'm just amazed at how comfortable of woman of God just walks out of a marriage. She responded, stop throwing the Bible at me. The couple continued to text about their marriage and at around 6.45 p.m. she apologized that I'm not the perfect Christian woman you thought you married. That evening around 8.30, after April arrived home from the baseball game and the boys went to their shared bedroom, one of them would later testify that he saw his father pull his mother by her arm into the hallway where she fell to the floor. He then shot her once in the leg, followed by two more shots, another one in the leg, and one in the back. Michael then texted April's stepfather, telling him he'd just shot April and to come and get their kids. 
Several minutes later, he also placed a call to 911 to report the incident. In addition to his call, neighbors called as well about hearing shots fired. When police arrived at his home in the Hyde Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, they found April deceased in the hallway from multiple gunshot wounds. She was 40 years old. Two police detectives interviewed Michael at the police station the day after the shooting. He said he had gotten upset about the texts he and April exchanged during their son's baseball game. He thought they had turned a corner financially, but April had decided not to try to work it out. He was just in so much pain that I just wanted her to feel some pain. April was a runner, so he shot her in the legs. He added that he had been drinking and was holding the gun, fully loaded, when she came home with the boys. According to him, after she sent the kids to their room, she lunged at him. He said there was a knife, but didn't remember if it was on the table, nor was he sure if she had anything in her hands when she lunged at him. The police did not find a knife on any table. He pushed April away and claimed that as he was pushing, he shot the first shot, not knowing where he hit her. She fell and he fired into her legs. Police tell ET that Michael's wife, April, had just gotten home from baseball practice with their kids. She apparently was only home for 10 to 15 minutes when she was shot several times with a handgun. Reportedly, Jace called 911 and said, I shot my wife. He then stayed on the line until police arrived. He was taken into custody and bail is set at $1 million. The couple's two sons are with April's family. The coroner and LAPD investigation is ongoing. Michael Jace did not have a criminal record at all. Um, neither did uh, April Jace. So both had, you know, both were pretty, you know, upstanding citizens before. Correct, that? correct. And talking to uh, the neighbors, they were described as a perfect couple. However, a woman described as a close friend of his first wife, Jennifer, said in a sworn statement that she witnessed Michael physically abusing her in 1997. The declaration was in court records from Michael's 2005 custody case concerning his son with Jennifer. Michael choked and hit his wife and slammed her against the wall while their infant son screamed in his crib next to her, the friend said. He was raging out of control, and seeing the extent of his anger was one of the most terrifying things I have ever seen, she said. News reports claim the motive of the shooting was believed to be domestic violence. The couple's financial problems were also looked at as a possible cause. Michael's most recent role was co-starring on Southland, but like many actors, he went for extended stretches of not working, and now stories are surfacing of severe financial problems. I kind of figured, like, they was losing money when I seen uh, he kind of traded his um, new um, bins in. ET has obtained records showing that Jay filed for bankruptcy three years ago. He listed debts between $500,000 and $1 million. It appears Michael and April, who worked as a college financial aid counselor, were underwater on their home mortgage and owed about $22,000 in back taxes. Three days after the tragedy, Michael was formally charged with murder by the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. Two years later, during the trial, the Deputy District Attorney argued for a first-degree verdict, saying the crime was premeditated. She told jurors Michael was waiting for his wife that day, and he shot her in the back and taunted her before shooting each of her legs. His 10-year-old son testified that he heard his father say, if you like running, then run to heaven before firing the second time. Michael did not testify in his own defense. He told detectives soon after the attack that he had retrieved the gun to take his own life, but couldn't do it. His defense attorney said his client was remorseful for what he did and asked for voluntary manslaughter, arguing that the incident was not planned and was in the heat of passion. However, the prosecution told jurors that Michael was upset because his wife wanted a divorce and believed she was having an affair, although no evidence was presented during the trial that she was cheating. Police investigators also found a way to bypass security features and open April's locked iPhone 5S. The Los Angeles Daily News reported that Michael and his wife argued about their relationship via text message shortly before he opened fire. On May 31, 2016, Michael was found guilty of second-degree murder. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Michael Andrew Jace, guilty of the crime of murder of April Jace.
It took the jury of six men and six women just about two hours to reach a verdict, finding the 53-year-old former actor of The Shield guilty of second-degree murder in the 2014 fatal shooting of his wife, April. It happened in their Hyde Park home with their two young sons in the house. Jurors also found true that Jace personally and intentionally used a firearm, a special allegation that could add 25 years to life to his sentence. Savoy, speaking for the family, said they were pleased with the verdict. Finally, he's, he's getting convicted. Finally, it's, it's uh, less of a burden. The following month, Michael Jace was sentenced to 15 years to life for second-degree murder and a consecutive 25-year sentence for the firearm enhancement for a total of 40 years to life. During the sentencing handed down by a Los Angeles judge, April's mother addressed the court, weeping as she talked about her daughter, saying she also died the night her daughter lost her life. My first thought on my mind most mornings is, your daughter has been murdered. Then I wonder about how I'll do today without her. I think about how my grandsons will navigate their teen years. Will they remember their mother and how much she loved them? April's cousin, who took custody of the two youngest children, also made a statement about how they were handling everything, being only five and eight at the time. They awaken through the night with nightmares of being abandoned. One of them wakes at the crack of dawn before I go to work just to hug me because he fears I will not return home. The cousin said Michael should never be allowed out of prison so he can live the rest of his days and mourn the loss of his own life. Michael then tearfully apologized for fatally shooting his wife, but still insisted he didn't mean to kill her, much to her family's outrage. No justification for my actions that night at all. I'm profoundly sorry for the pain that I caused everyone. During the middle of Jace's statement, the victim's mother and other family members abruptly walked out of the courtroom, showing no interest in what the former actor had to say. He is currently incarcerated at the California State Prison, Corcoran, at Corcoran, California. Just after the news of April's untimely death, Biola University President Barry Corr provided the following written statement. We are obviously shocked and saddened by this terrible news to lose a wonderful colleague, mother, and friend. The Biola family will stand with this precious family and the employees who are grieving today, and my prayer is that the God of all comfort will be our refuge and peace. Financial aid director Jeff Marsh added, April's radiant personality brought great energy to the financial aid office. Her love for helping students and families and her great work ethic earned the respect and love of her coworkers. Her smiling face and helpful spirit will be missed by all.